Connie Joes. Oh, I, I have a particular wonderful uh, memory of her. We uh, were together in a show at um, Perkins Art Center, I believe, in Moorestown. She and I, in a conversation one time, she also taught children too. We were saying how much, uh, you know, how much, how wonderful our lives are because they were touched by art and living close to the earth here in South Jersey. You know, uh, again, this is her environment. She, she always said uh, fishing was so good because she could think of other things, you know, something else would come along. And it's made by Connie Jost, who was a wonderful artist. She used the largest flounder or sole that had been caught off of Cape May in the Delaware Bay. Uh, the fishermen called her because she'd come down to get lots of fishes. She was even known as the fish lady down there. And they said, we've got the largest flounder that we've found, and we're saving it for you, Connie. So she came down, and she got it, and then she used it in this piece. And then later, because she had cast it, she could use it many times. She also used the same fish, but a smaller version of the fish, to create the waves and then the flounder, or the, the sole themselves. And this is called Soul Survivors. Perhaps this speaks to us polluting our water and they're gasping for air in the water. You can really put your own meaning to it, but it's meant as an environmental message. She almost did, I would say, portraits of fish, and she made us think about fish quite a lot. My fishing license and my artistic license are sort of the same thing. <laughs> Besides, I have a father that's a sports fisherman, and he'd have a fit if they weren't correct. Oh, my yeah. dad and my mother both were uh, avid sports fishing people, and uh, we would go off and, and fish every holiday and every vacation. Okay, now I can just take it. Yeah. So I reach people who are interested in fish or interested in marine biology or interested in the environment. Um, and then I throw my other little plugs in there, uh, sometimes political, um, sometimes just a way to look at yourself. And that's pretty good mold. Yeah. All the scales and everything. When she was three years old, uh, I started in with uh, teaching her art, and she was very quick uh, about learning and thought and did detail work. Because when the average person looks at something outside, they don't really look at it like an artist. An artist sees all the detail and everything, and I noticed that she was that type of a person right away. And then she drew all the time and everybody in school told her how good she was you know even when she was young but she was very good in art all all her life she loved fishing and she loved uh fish like the color i bought her a, a book with seven thousand pictures of fish in it and i think she knew everyone and she um Oh, uh, she loved the beach and the sand and everything in it. I taught her on the beach how to take the plaster if there was like a, a bird's foot or an animal's foot and how you, that we would take plaster, regular plaster with fresh water and mix it up on the beach and make a cast of that. Even at camp, she worked with me at camp, at the YMCA camp, she was arts and crafts like me and we taught all the children that too at camp. Connie talked uh, the first time I heard her speak at one of her openings about a college professor that she had that challenged the students at, to make art. And so she had to think about what she really cared about. And what she cared about was the environment. And what she cared about was the fish and what was happening with the ocean dumping. And she challenged herself to come up with pieces that would give a voice to her strong feelings for our environment. So people would walk around and then they would be laughing. And this, the message that they get was first funny, and then when you think about it, it was very serious. And it was uh, her way of hooking you and getting you to pay attention to pollution and what is happening to our environment and our fish and uh, in turn our earth. After working for quite a while in latex, she then moved past that into fiberglass 
And this is one that she basically sold quite a lot of. And she said about this one oh, when she sold thing. it, don't flounder in the dark. <laughs> and so this is a light switch. Connie's fish are painted realistically, but they are put together as a collage. They would no not look like a man's fish trophy hanging on the wall because there would be the way it had been assembled. There would be the extra pieces that were on there that would give it a different meaning. One of them that she did looked like some game you would play at a uh, carnival. And it had these different things that looks like you could shoot at them. And it gave me the idea as I was looking at it that man was killing the fish just like we could shoot away some target in a carnival game. But it was serious stuff. It wasn't just a picture of a fish. Connie's work could have been thought in some senses as craft, but I think that art is the intention of the person more than the painting itself. And, and the intention of Connie was very serious and very beautiful, and I would not have classed her work as, as craft um, unless craft was being talked about in the highest sense. She had uh, curiosity and quite a, a playful nature. And when you go look at her, her work, you would see visual visions that were so nice. Um, fish paintings that were sculptures. Yeah, I'd like to tell you about uh, my Connie's got this brainstorm to send these rubber fish, see, the rubber fish, Oh, um, <clears throat> through the mail and charge $40 a piece because then she could get some extra money, you know. So this is what she put the first one she addressed to me and took it to the post office. And uh, the postman, he didn't laugh or anything when he weighed this and he said it would be 37 cents to send it through the mail. And she thought you could send a note through the mail like a card, uh, and if it's your birthday or it's Mother's Day or Father's Day, and this is what she put on it. Hi, just a quick note to chase the blues away. This is a bluefish, and I remember. No current news, working hard, no squidding. See you soon, love Connie. Official Joe's card. Uh, Connie was very concerned about our whole area here. She was a person who cared deeply for many things. Her work would show you the environment that she grew up in and learned to care in. But if Connie were born in the Midwest, she would have found something else to care about that had to do with that area. Because Connie had the soul of an artist, and it wouldn't have mattered where you put her, she would have been an artist. The art that she did make had to do with the area that she lived because she grew up here, cared about here, cared about all people and our entire environment. If you do damage to our ocean, you do damage to us.